Hey, what is up guys? My name is Eric and in today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how you could group related pieces of information in something called a C++ structure. Now in the past, we've always been learning how to use things such as loops, arrays, and just simple data types to store simple pieces of information. Now what if we wanted to create a more complicated program that stores multiple pieces of information? Not only that, those pieces of information are related to one another. For instance, let's say I wanted to create a program that deals with books. And we know that books have multiple pieces of information such as string name of the book string author and let's keep it simple so and end it off here so integer publication year now we could declare these type of variables multiple times for each new book that we make however it gets complicated over time because as our program grows bigger and bigger we need some way to cleanly manage and organize all these pieces of information without getting confused now one of the way to do this is by using something called a C++ structure. Now, some of you might be thinking, but wait, can't we use an array to store these pieces of information? Well, that's a good guess, but no. The reason has to do with the fact that arrays can only store multiple pieces of information as long as they are the same data type. So in this case, we want to store strings and an integer, and obviously, again, arrays, one data type. So it will not work for this case. So the thing that will help solve our problem is by using the C++ structure. To create a structure, first off, go outside, of, go outside of the main function and above it, but below all your libraries and namespaces, type in the word struct, followed by the name of the structure. So in this case, because we're dealing with information of a book, the general name we would want to give it is called a book, followed by opening and closing curly brackets and end it off with a semicolon. Now inside of the curly brackets, this is where you would type in your data members or variables. So in this case, we would put all three of these variables inside of our structure. And this basically defines what a book is. So let's say we wanted to create a book to store like, let's say just the information of a book. So let's call book, book A, kind of like a variable. So you would give it the type. So in this case, it would be the the name of the structure called book followed by the name that will represent like kind of like your variable name now before i go on there are two ways to initialize a structure's data members or values for each of the variables inside of a structure so this is the first way so first way to initialize a structure so book book a equals open and closing curly brackets semicolon and then inside of the curly brackets you would type in order the information that corresponds to each of the data members inside the structure so the first piece of information is a name and that is a string so quote let's say harry potter and the sorcerer's stone and then a comma next line it would also be a string which corresponds to the author so that's jk rowling another comma and then finally the publication year so the sorcerer's stones publication year is 1997 according to the internet okay so that's how you initialize it by using the first method now the second method to initialize a structure is like this so like the first one we type in the structure's name and that is a book and then next we give it a name so book let's call it b this time so instead of using equals and then opening closing curly brackets with a semicolon this time you end it off with a semicolon and then on the next line you would type in book b just like you would do with your variables however except this time in order to access the data members or also known as variables inside of the structure you would have to use something called the member access operator and what the member access operator is, is basically a period. And it allows you to access the data members inside the structure. As you can see, that's where the name came from, member access operator. So in this case, let's access the name. And then to give it the value, you do equals. And then because the name is a string, we do quotes. And then Harry Potter and the uh, Chambers secrets i i think that's the name let's see and the chamber of secrets my bad it's been too long <laughs> okay let's see and the chamber of secrets 
and then semicolon. And then if you want to initialize the author in the publication year, you would do the same thing by using the member access operator. So book B dot author equals JK Rowling semicolon. And then book B dot publication year equals and then this time because it's an integer you don't need the quotes and the publication year for chamber of secrets is supposedly 1998 yep semicolon now if we want to see out the information from book a let's put it down here so see out you would use the member access operator again except this time it's just for referencing the stored value inside of it. So let's say title and then book a dot name and then end line just to make it look nice. And then we would do this um, author just to make it look nice. Book a dot author. And then finally see out publication year book a dot publication year. And line. Okay, and if we were to compile this program and run it, we should see all three pieces of information printed out. And that's what it did. As you can see, it shows title, which is right here, and then followed by the title stored in book A, which is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, followed by the author, the publication year, and then the end of the program. Okay, so let's do the same thing again for the second book, book B. So let's see out the title book b dot name and line see out author book b dot author and line and then see out publication year book b dot publication year and line and if we were to rerun this again this time we would see the information from both books because we did see out for both of them so as you can see right here on the first three lines, it shows the information for book A. And then the last three lines, we see the information for book B. So as you can see, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stones, J.K. Rowling, 1997. And then Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, J.K. Rowling, 1998. Okay, so let's say, let's pretend this is a, this is a small piece of a gigantic program that manages books in the library, okay? So let's say um, book B went missing, so there's no more Chamber of Secrets, so we had to replace it with a different Harry Potter book. And let's say it's The Prisoner of Azkaban. So to update the information, we would simply do book B dot name equals, and then because we're doing this after book B dot name has run already, this will overwrite the stored value of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets with our new value and that is going to be Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. So Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I think that's how you spell it. And then semicolon. And then book B dot author. Well it's the same thing except the publication year. So book B dot publication year is let's see was it 1999? Yep, 1999, semicolon. So if we were to see out the title for our book B dot name, it should show the new value and the publication year. Just to show you that these value has changed. So let's compile and run this program. Okay, so as you can see, first three lines remain the same because we did not touch it. Second three lines remain the same because we did not touch that. Now the last two lines, which shows the two pieces of information that we updated for book B is different because as you can see, we ran, we reinitialized the values name and publication year for book B by overriding it with these two pieces of information, which is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and the publication year of 1999. And this proves that all of this works. So in conclusion, C++ structures are great when you want to organize different data types together in one location without having it all over the place. And not only that, you could use either method to initialize the structure. It's up to you. Me personally, I like the second method to initialize the structure. And that is all for today's tutorial. Thank you for watching and please like this video if you found it helpful. And if you have any questions 
or concerns, please leave it in the comments below and I'll try to answer your question to the best of my ability. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.